You have a short field takeoff. Give it a little bit of flaps. Keep the nose off the ground just a bit, just a hair, a little bit of pullback there. Okay, now we got, we got it. Okay. So welcome to a series I'm making about one of the most important aspects of aviation and that is navigation. And what I have in front of me here is a chart. And I'm going to plan a flight from an airport down here, uh, KEAT, in Washington State, United States, at an altitude of 1,245 feet with a lighted runway 5,500 feet long. And we're going to take off from there and we're going to head up to a little airport cut around 345 or 55 degrees north of us here um, in a state park. Now that navigation that requires some navigation here because the airport that we're going to um, has a lighted runway but it's in a valley and it doesn't have its own VOR and navigation on the field. So what we have to look for is from our departing airport there's a VOR with DME 111.0 and we're going to be tracking that out in our aircraft uh, out toward we draw a line, we use some of these instruments that we have angle and distance calculators and what we're going to do is going to draw basically a line because our VOR is right on our field which is a good advantage for us. We're just going to head straight out. It looks like uh, a direct route would be along the um, about 342 degrees. Now that's the ideal okay but along the way we have some obstacles here. We're starting to look at what kind of route we might take here because one way we could do it we're going to be seeing a river here and we can follow this river more or less as a landmark and we're going to cross kind of a reservoir. At some point there's going to be another airport off to our right which could be considered an alternate. We're going to be heading into some mountainous terrain so now we look here and the highest thing that we have to go over is 9,100 feet that's the figure which is 8,100 plus um, they always put a thousand feet above. So now we really have to clear, get up to be at least 10,000 feet here if we want to go that route. And then it would be a steep descent to our airport which is only at 1,694 feet. Now what we could do instead is to follow the river and go up that way and then follow a smaller river with tributary, just go all the way up the valley and just find our airport that way. So those are things to keep in mind, but we do want to track our VOR so we have a rough idea where we're going. We can still do visual over the river, but still have an idea uh, what the direct route would be. Now, there are things that um, we use to calculate. A lot of people know these things. We can calculate an angle. Let's say you want to determine the angle of departure or arrival to across one of these maps. Now these um, lines here are true north and as we all know in this case here the magnetic north points to the east of true north where in the east coast it points more toward the west generally. Now one of the things that we need to do is an old saying for pilots is a short pencil is better than a long memory and when we want to start doing any serious navigation we want to write down things before we even get in the plane and start having to write things down. So what I'm going to write down is a number of things here. I need to know a little bit about my flight and that's where flight planning comes in. Now there's little devices like this where you can fill in your checkpoints, your lapse time, your frequencies and so on. Because when you go on a long trip there's you get handed off by different frequencies, different areas, and you want to know what your routes are, the various waypoints and legs. Now we could go the direct route, but as we were discussing, 
it means that we have to climb straight up over these mountains and then a steep descent, some ragged territory. Maybe it'd be better uh, to go up the cruise up the valley um, and make it not such a direct route. Now, in addition, we have this area of military airspace here, 1,500 below uh, above ground level. So above that um, is military. So we want to be coming in kind of low, and in this case, that would be an advantage because we can go down this valley, and we'll be well within that um, area. So um, we're going to set up some of our radios and our beacons. And just an example here, we want to write down 111.0, that's our VOR from departure, and we're leaving from at, let's say, the our initial departure is at the 340 degrees from that radio. Uh, now we're going to go up the river at this point, but the direct route, both basically, if we keep that uh, VOR set to about 342 degrees from, uh, even though we may take the track over the river, we can at least have in mind uh, where we stand. Now, there's always a good reason to consider an alternate airport in case something happens. So, in this case, uh, we have a number of them that are possibilities. We have one along the river here. There's a private field there. So there's a number of possibilities. And then on the last leg uh, up this river valley, there's another one even before. Uh, so we just have to keep that in mind. And you might want to write those down and their communication frequencies and their elevations so you have some idea. Now, I'm not going to do it all right here. But again, a pencil and have two or three pencils with you because if you break one, you always have a second one. Um, so... What I'm going to do is, in our next segment, we'll select an aircraft. We'll set the, I'll set up the flight for, from this airport. We'll select an aircraft that can do this flight, and we'll go and check the weather. Now, I wanted to demonstrate a couple of options here. Um, this is a knee pad from about 1954 military grade and it's really fine. I got it on eBay. It has this rotation thing. You strap it to your knee. It can You can open it. It has some things here for your flight plan and uh, for all your headings and information and you can put things like this in here about your airspace and gadgets like that. It has a place for a pen. Now I can't turn it on right now but it has a a light so that when you open this up there's a little red light that goes on so you can see what you're doing and you close it there's a red light that appears in the center of this and you can rotate this around and you can set this dial to your heading and to your crosswinds um, and you can mark and hear some of your communication and navigation frequencies so this is the kind of stuff that is really uh, cool uh, that pilots use. Another good thing to have is a good watch. And there's a lot of pilot watches out there that are very good. This is made by um, Torgen. And one criteria is you want to have something that's easily visible. And if it glows in the dark, that's even better. And makes you sure it's pretty accurate and you need a second hand. But there's a lot of other kinds of timers available now. Digital timers. And you can use them to uh, take uh, readings on legs of your trip and so on. Now here's an interesting device that has like a compass on one side, magnetic compass on the other side, it has a little dial. And what you do is you can set it down here and you can track it out and measure the exact amount of time because instead of going direct, in fact we're going to do this here and kind of see what kind of um, mileage we're talking about here and on the other end it has a little pencil so those are some of the tools that you can use when you set up your flight plan